see the full screen or the the presenter view? Uh, I see the the full screen. Great. Um, okay, so I yielded some time, uh, so this is going to be short. And honestly, uh, discussing this many ideas in ten minutes is a little silly. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is is kind of reiterate what I think some of the really critical points and, and Dr. Yu um, did a great job of setting that up um, with the caveat of this being a US centric analysis. And, and we have people, Jacques um, Tomaso, who can kind of speak to the European context, but I'll do so a little bit. Um, this issue in the US of the first amendment um, restricting sort of doing prior restraint um, or being an arbiter of truth is, of course, one of the fundamental problems that, that you know, Dr. Yu pointed out and then Marshall is trying to, uh, to solve for. Um, I did think that it was interesting, and, and maybe Dr. Yu and I saw that slightly different. I thought it was pretty impressive that um, the, the Craigslist kind of trafficking pollution, if you will, um, was something that could be um, thwarted. Um, as opposed to uh, seeing that as, as a real problem. So I thought that was a space for some innovation. Um, I, I think this is a very important distinction that both of our, our presenters raised between distribution and redistribution or amplification in the terminology they used. Um, the economics, uh, Dr. Van Alstyne pointed out um, the cost structure of production of fake news may be more uh, cheaper rather than um, than truth. But I think uh, an equally important point is the, the work that uh, Sunan Aral did with co-authors, noting that the novelty of fake news is often more engaging. And if you combine that with the business models of an ad-sponsored multi-sided platform, you then create really strong incentives to distribute false information. And so that's, I think, one of those business models are at the heart of what need to be solved for. Um, in Dr. Van Alstyne's paper, he points this out, and I think Dr. Yu alluded to it, but I, I think it's worth saying, we, this is a really big problem. Um, we've got demonstrable evidence of, of kind of excess deaths of COVID as a result of fake information you know, well-documented um, incidents of election interference across the world and not just in, in countries like the U.S., but often in um, sort of medium and smaller countries where autocratic regimes are able to influence election outcomes uh, using social media um, campaigns. Um, an earlier version of sort of the harm actually came out of radio uh, sort of a precursor, if you will, to our platforms in, in the 1994 Rwanda um, kind of massacres. And then more recently in Myanmar, where Facebook is under fire for amplifying um, false claims about the Rohingya, and then that's led to violence against a, a, a specific population. And then near and dear to my own heart, one of my undergraduate college classmates is Dr. Maria Reza, and um, she's a... Um, that people probably know, but she's a um, journalist in the Philippines and has been under significant kind of fire from the Filipino government. Um, and that's much fake information. So, you know, a lot of problems here and a lot of need for solutions. So I think from this group, you know, we're really good at identifying the problems. I think we, we've got a lot more solution needs. And so if you look a little bit I think the EU is worth um, pointing out as a place of a lot of ferment, if you will, for policy innovation and kind of full disclosure. Tommaso Marshall and I spent a fair bit of time looking at the Digital Markets Act um, as part of a project for commentary for the uh, the European Union. Um, but they've they've done some work on the Digital Media Observatory, uh, implementing rapid alert systems for detection. Um, commitments from the the technology firms and a code of practice that was just updated recently a couple months ago um, on disinformation. The problem here is uh, on the last bullet, which is that this is all voluntary. And so you've got um, 
space for innovation, sort of Sweden versus Hungary, but you've also got a lot of leeway. And so when we've seen that, it's hard to make progress. And so that's why I'll, I'll kind of finish on why I like what Marshall's doing, which is to try to take this utilitarian view where we've seen prior deontological views, you know, based on the speakers, um, and then have this distinction between distribution versus amplification, and then assign where the harm comes from. Of course, we've already seen in chat, and it's one that Dr. Van Olsen and I are already talking about, the devil's always in the details in this, because you've got to think about who can determine truth, how do you actually crowdsource enough of this and who's the ultimate backstop? Because at the end, you'll have to have some authority. You can't just, unless we're going to believe in sort of the Neil Stevenson snow crash world, um, we're going to have some sort of a, a backstop on the market, on the claims of resources, on something. Um, that being said, I think this EU kind of focus on gatekeeper platforms and then a lot of state level experimentation offers some hope for a just a distributed set of efforts to see kind of what works and what doesn't. Um, with that, I'll turn it back to you, Ginger.